so Tim, this is a bit of a blast from the past. Like That's Gareth right. and the team were obviously out to you about seven or eight years ago. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. And we've decided to come out and see you again now because what we wanted to see really was the, the massive change in the fleet that you've had. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of course, when Gareth called out to you those seven or eight years ago, you were running Valtras. Correct. And you've pretty much changed nearly the whole fleet now to John Deere. Yes, and uh, and another change in between. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of bits in between yeah. too. But, um, <laughs> tell me, how did that happen? What made you want to go down the John Deere route? It, right, a bit of a long, a long story. We were, as you say, we're all Valtra. Our dealer lost the Valtra agency, and that prompted us to look at um, a different make. So we we actually went with the maker tractor that the, the dealer moved to, and. I mean, I won't mention any makes, but it was, it, it, they weren't for us. And then, yeah, we looked at John Deere and it was, it was probably the salesman that was selling, that was selling us the Crown Foragers when we were on Crown Foragers. He'd moved to John Deere and really it was just the, the deal they came up with. It was a fantastic deal. Took all the other makes a tractor out, put the John Deere's in and the payments stayed exactly the same. We got full warranty, full service package. So really with nothing to lose, you know, give, give it a go. And uh, it's proven to be the best move we've ever made. But there were seven tractors came. We've actually just started to change them ones again. They've done the 3,000 hours. We always intended to swap them the 3,000 hours once the warranty was out. We've just started to change them and it's worked out. We've changed them tractors for £10.80 an hour. It's what it's cost us. So they're probably the cheapest tractors we've ever run. They've been absolutely tremendous. You know, the lads love them. As a driver's tractor, I mean, you can't fault them. They, they, they get the spec they want. Uh, they've all come with front linkages and PTOs, so they've all got their own tractors. They can do the job. Whatever jobs to do, they can do with that tractor. They love driving them, and from my point of view, cost of ownership, as I say, £10.80 an hour. Nothing else. That's, that's all it's been. You know, and that's, I think that's, that's unbeatable. You know, as everything's gone up in price, they've probably been the, the cheapest tractors I've ever run for a long time. It's not even just the tractors that you're running with John Deere. You've changed quite a bit in regards to the John Deere brand. We have. We've gone very green and yellow, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Of course, so the tractors at the same time, we've got one forager, and since then we, we, we've got another. So we're now running two John Deere foragers. We did, I mean, we tried them against the Crone, and we were, we were very surprised. I mean, um, I always say they'll send the machine out on demo and it, it can and often does go the other way. You get it on demo and you think, well, I don't like it. But the forager was the opposite. We loved the forager. We tried it twice. The driver liked it. So again, it was bought with it, you know, the full warranty and the backup with it. And it it, 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 it just proven to be absolutely a uh, tremendous machine, driver's machine. Gone out every day, done everything we wanted of it. And then at the same time, we also bought the big square bill. It was ready for changing. So we bought that and we didn't try one. We just, just took, took them at the word and thought, right, take a gamble. And we bought the bill. And to be honest, the bill, we've done two years with it. And it's, it's been tremendous as well. I suppose if you're working off what, how well you've worked with, say, the forager and the tractors. Ab absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, the backup's been tremendous. Um, well, we've had very little downtime anyway. You know, it's been, it's been great. There's also been somebody at the end of the phone if we've got an issue or a problem. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we're pleased to be John Deere, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we say, when we were out to you before, you were running one of your own foragers and you were hiring then off Harry Wilson. That's correct, yes, yeah. Is yeah. there any reason that you made the change, we say, from hiring to owning both machines? Simple, financial. It, it made sense to hire and then it made sense to buy. You know, we always ran, we always did own two foragers. Then the figures didn't stack up against hiring and then it, it went the other way. It was. Um, you know, to me, there's no difference between a higher charge or a finance charge. It's still money to pay out every year for that machine. And it sort of stacked up in the favour of buying again. So, yes, we've always run a class forager. Um, we were hiring Crone. We've then, we've run, we bought two Crones. We ran Crones ourselves. They've gone for the John Deere and the class has just gone this time for another John Deere. Nothing against the, the class was a tremendous forager, you know, still is a tremendous forager. It was just the John Deere was presented to us at the right price and again, the deal, the deal was right. We know the machine and um, so yeah, we've done that.
season that we thought now was probably a great time to come back out and see you again as well is um, I know you were on the phone to Gareth kind of earlier on in the year in regards to trailers. That's right. Because uh, you're actually running a Mark Hall in the fleet at the moment. We are, yes, yes. Any particular reason it, you went for that kind of trailer, would say? Because obviously a lot of people are interested in the likes of your bigger, your exactly. tri-axle, your heavier, but you've yeah. gone kind of down the other route here. Absolutely. Well, we have, you know, the operation, we've, we've, we've got a lot of trailers. We have trailers for grain. We know we, we're on with harvest at the same time as we're silaging now. So we have trailers for harvest. We have dump trailers. We have, we have the whole range of trailers. And we realised we needed some big, we wanted, you know, the tractors have all got bigger. So we wanted some bigger trailers. We needed 18 foot trailers. The problem being, we still have a lot of small farms, so we had to have a range of 16 foot trailers as well. We couldn't, we couldn't just swap all for 18 foot. So we couldn't have a, a colossal amount of money tied up in the trailers, and we didn't want it, because once we finish silage, and them trailers will be parked up until next year. So we didn't need these high spec trailers, expensive trailers with a lot of weight. We just wanted 18 foot to carry grass. Light, carry grass. So, yeah, they've still got the commercial axle, flotation tyres, sprung drawbar, you know, LED lights, every, every, all that sort of spec you'd expect. But then at the top, it's just, it's all solid. The tops don't come off, the facilage, with just a manual up and over door, which was something rather strange for Mark. I mean, I think over the water, they don't seem to run a lot of them. We didn't need rams, we didn't need to be able to lift the door up, and the trailer goes up, the back door comes up, the grass comes out. Simple, absolutely yeah. simple, and that's what... That's what we asked for. We worked with Mark, he, he made us exactly what we wanted and to be honest, we're absolutely delighted with them. Yeah. Tremendous. I mean, we work, we put them over the weigh bridge. Yeah, they're, on, they're two foot longer, but we're actually carrying 22% more grass. You know, we've weighed heavy loads, light loads, comparing, you know, putting a, one of the 16 foot trailers over, or Mark's trailer over, and each time it's coming out around about a 22%. So we're getting 22% extra capacity. In fact, the, the, the trailer is holding almost exactly the same as the forage box. Yeah, because you're really, you used to be very into your forage we boxes. We were. We got rid of one. We still do a little bit with them. Various reasons, it died off slightly. There's still people who use them. There's still people who don't mind what we turn up with. But as we've just got more and more and more work, the multi-cut system has created such a huge amount of work. We just need them to be getting on all the time, yeah. getting on and getting on. We still do an odd job with them, so I, I don't think it'll ever go. It's, 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 it's there, it's paid for, it'll, um, yeah, it'll, it'll all serve a purpose. Something you touched on there, obviously, with the multi-cut system here, like the silage season, do you find it's getting longer every oh. year? We, we start, yeah, well, it's certainly starting soon. We're starting last week of, uh, of April, and then we're off, and then, um, well, it never stops. You know, we just we just just constantly going. You know, we flat out this week. We'll have another week next week. There'll still be a bit more after that. With the weather being good, it, we're going to probably the season's going to finish slightly sooner than you know. I've seen us this time of year I'll have all the third and fourth cuts still to do. So the season is 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 going to finish just because of the weather slightly sooner. But no, it's it's created a colossal amount of work. You know, colossal the acres. You know, you're covering the acres. You know, sooner finishing it round again. You know. Um, four to five weeks and you're back, you're back around the same farm again. Yeah, because you've, you've certainly expanded since we were last year. Obviously, the farm we're on right now is yeah. something that you've taken a tenancy for Correct. since we were last year. That's and you're right. actually, you've moved into the, the cattle side of things That's too. Right. That's right. I mean, you're, I, you're definitely giving yourself enough work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we've sort of done the opposite of what a lot of people do. You know, you seem to get a farmers that move into, into contracting. We've done it the other way around. We were contractors and we've, we've now moved into farming. Um, and it was simple just just to spread out the out the machinery you, the, you, we've got the machinery we've got the skills and um, you have the staff we have the staff so yeah so y y utilize it and I, it's something I don't know why a lot of other people haven't done if the land's available you know to, to, to utilize it and it means you, you can trial work on your own land and do I mean we've, we've done an awful lot all the rape um, the, the you know the kale, the forage rape, um, a lot, some grass seeds have all gone in this time just with the flat lift and then with either the gutler or the combination drill. We haven't ploughed an awful lot, but we've done it all our own. It's it's worked absolutely tremendous. Well, now we can sort of roll that out onto customers' farms and say, look, we've tried this and it works, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying it on a customers' farm. Them saying, oh, that was a disaster. Shouldn't yeah. have done that. So it, for all sorts of reasons, we can trial it and do and. Um, as I say, it means there's never a quiet day. There's always work. You can yeah, keep the lads I mean, going all winter and yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. mean, touching on, even on the harvest side of things, you're still flat out with that. Um, yeah. You're kind of coming to the end of that now, are Just you? Just about. We've, we're, our own's finished. We've got our own. We finished yesterday. Yeah, um, yeah caught you out with the Tucano there last. Yeah, well, that was our yesterday. last field, but he's out now. We do. We don't do a lot of contracting with the combine. It's really for our own work, but we do on bits. We seem to do a bit of spring barley at the end, so there's a way now cleaning up other people's spring barley. 
But you yeah. seem to be doing a bit of everything because as well as that, yesterday evening I caught you out with the Massey 185 and yeah, the small square baler. Yeah, absolutely. So, we, yeah, it, it was, it, we've had a busy few days. Uh, it, I always say this, you know, September, I know it, it's only just gone August, but it's usually sort of September as you can be your busiest time. You're doing everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, people always say first cut salvage, oh, that'd be your busiest. That, that's actually probably our quietest time of year. First cut. Because it's just first cut, you, you, You've got first cut, nothing else. You know exactly what you're doing. It's easy then. You know, but now, you know, we silage, you harvest, you, you know, we started drilling barley yesterday, we're, we're crushing barley, we feed, you know, we, everything's happening. Everything's happening. So it, it is a, it, it's a busy time of year. You used to run a Valtra on the Buck Creek and now you're still running a tractor on a Buck Creek, but now obviously it's the John Deere. How have you found that kind of conversion? We, we seem to have sort of morphed through lots of different we, 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 you know, like everybody just had a standard tractor on the book rake and then we had the Valtra reverse drive and I still still think that, that was tremendous. Um, we went to the loading shovel for a year or two, we had two loading shovels and then yeah, they, we just seemed to, the lads, because they've all got their own tractor, they mm. just like to use their own tractor and put a book rake on the back, hydraulic top link, you know, it's, it's, what, it's what they like. If, if somebody wanted something different, we'd go down. I was sort of led by who was doing the work, what they like. We have the 320, it does a few small jobs and then it can help out on the farm in the winter. So yeah, what we'll have next year, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> time will tell. Yeah, time will tell, exactly. And, and then, as well as touching back with the vultures, then you're still, there's still a couple in the fleet that we do used, odd we jobs. Used, we still have one or two. We have one or two of the old ones. I, I have one, a small a four-cylinder one on the farm. I always said I would never have a four-cylinder and I have one with a loader on and I, I quite like it. It's, I do an odd job with that. We've one or two of the older ones, so yeah, they're bought and paid for, they're here. We know the faults, we'll be able to keep them going. Yeah. <laughs> you hadn't had them long enough we now to know what exactly, you're exactly. expecting. Like. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Well, that, that's absolutely brilliant, Tim. No Thanks bother. a million for having us out. It's been a delight to kind of yeah, see how see the again. business has changed. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it's been lovely coming out and seeing you. Great, thank you. Okay. Yeah.